This, 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 this is the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertsons and broadcasting live from Sidecar Social at the Star in Frisco. Brought to you by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Tastes like Miller time. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Luke Casey, the official bootmaker of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, make your crypto play today. Buffalo Wild Wings, if it's game day, Buffalo Wild Wings is the place to be. Altec Lansing, just listen with Altec Lansing, perfecting sound since 1927. And by Omni. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, your hosts, Nicole Hutchison and Brad Shan. Welcome, everybody, to the Cowboys Hour. Woo! <laughs> Welcome to uh, Victory Monday, because it was a great weekend. and it was. The Victory Monday Club is here. Happy to have you with us as the Cowboys come out of their bye. And uh, we are here at Sidecar Social at the Star District in Frisco, there are two NFL games on television, and I, one of them is streaming, but it'll stream on one of these 94 televisions that are here at Sidecar Social, I promise. <laughs> great place to come and have great food and drinks and watch the games, and then if you get here at 6 o'clock, then you get to come see the best kicker in football, Brandon Aubrey, sitting Woo! right over here. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It. No, yeah. thank you. Thanks for coming out. Uh, we want to, as always, welcome all of you who are – who are here. We always appreciate you folks coming to be a part of the program here. Uh, to all of you listening, wherever that might be, on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network and uh, watching whenever and wherever on uh, streaming on DallasCowboys.com. So we'll wave to you. Nice to have you folks uh, with us. So I, I was, when I knew you were going to be coming, Brandon Aubrey, I was thinking about what a great time we had with you last season when you were here. And then I got to thinking about uh, how much your life has changed. Oh, yeah. In in that period of time, you, you um, are a Pro Bowl, all pro kicker. And now you are the father of a, is it today? Ten weeks today? Ten weeks today. Ten weeks today, <laughs> Colton Aubrey. <laughs> <coughs> Which is why... Brandon's lovely wife, Jen, who was here last year when he came and, and uh, shared the hour with us, is at home. She's otherwise occupied. Yep. So um, let's, let's start with that. How in 10 weeks, I mean, those of us who have been parents for a while can tell you, you oh, you don't even know what's coming. <laughs> but, it, but, but every day's glorious, right? So t- how has your life changed in 10 weeks? Yeah, a um, lot less sleep i'd say not a lot less sleep but uh jen for jen in particular a lot less sleep she's pulling the night shift which is awesome for me making sure my body's in top shape but um you know just this week was awesome the bye week being able to stay home and just spend some quality time going out to pumpkin patch you know just doing those normal activities make you feel kind of like a normal person um get to sit down and watch football all day sunday um got the Thursday night game and all that. So it was, it was nice to just be a normal person. And um, as far as the way life has changed, you know, it hasn't changed much with football season going on. Uh, it's still kind of the same grind as last year, but um, I'm excited for, for the off season to go and um, just kind of explore and kind of watch him grow. Uh, just sit there for hours, just staring at him. He's finally smiling. So he's just sitting there looking at us and occasionally cooing and smiling, which is the best thing in the world. What's the day-to-day like, dad like, like, life like? Yeah, rush home, get there as, as fast as possible from, from uh, football and just kind of change a diaper, do everything I can around around the house to ease the load for, for Jen there. But um, there's not much I can do because, you know, I can't feed him. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I try my best, but, you know, just, just be present and enjoy the moments, watch him grow. He's not doing a whole lot. He's not mobile yet, yeah. just smiling and cooing. Did you uh, do you find yourself coming home and uh, walking in and saying to her, "Oh, honey, it's great to see you. What did I miss today?" Absolutely, yeah. It's kind of changed the dynamic between the two of us. It's kind of just all about him now, which is is a good thing, I think. But I've um, got to find the time to you know sit there and, and enjoy moments together as well. So th- you, you touched on it, but this is I'm a dad too, in case anybody <laughs> didn't know. But uh, but I've been one for quite a while. But I remember that we were just talking about the, all the great 
discoveries that you and your wife have coming because of the discoveries that he has coming? Are there one or two little things that just in 10 weeks that you, you mentioned smiling and cooing? Are there any little things that made you go, oh, wow, I never knew that was such a cool thing? Yeah, just control of your your arms and legs he has zero control of his arms and legs so <laughs> kind of scares himself awake, uh, awake sometimes and just take that for granted i guess but i'm excited for him to kind of figure out how to control his body and start crawling around and just be able to play with him a little bit more because right now it's just making faces at him and seeing if he reacts doesn't really track the fingers he's just just starting to track with his eyes but not a lot you can do other than just sit there and stare at him so w when you were here last year, we talked uh, about, and we'll touch on it, some of it again tonight. Everybody didn't get to hear it about your journey, how you got here and how you got to the NFL. But um, really, the thrust of the conversation had to be what an unusual thing it was, the way you got to the NFL, and, and you're, you started right, white hot right out of the chute, uh, and, and how are you enjoying it? And so now... Um, you have kept it going for an almost another half season. You, some big awards uh, in football, uh, but now you have something else, another reason to go to work and succeed and do all that. Ha has that made you feel any different about football? Um, absolutely. It gives me a chance to go home and just not focus on performance. I can go home and just kind of escape a lot easier than I used to. Um, it used to be hard to get home and think about anything other than how I kicked today or what I got to do tomorrow. Now it kind of time flies by sitting there taking care of his needs and, you know, just, oh, it's time for bed. All of a sudden you kind of don't want to go to bed, but I uh, got to just to get the energy back for, for tomorrow. Kind of piggybacking off of that, Dak has always talked about his dad's strength when he had his <laughs> baby girl, uh, and a lot of the players do when they have uh, kids. But for you, what has that dad's strength been like? Um, it's <laughs> it's been awesome. You know, the kind of the the next game, like mm. four days later, was the the Raiders game, which I got to hit a 66 yard field, <laughs> which is crazy. And then kind of took that into the season with Cleveland getting another shot at it. Wish that one would have counted. And then the Ravens game, the 65. So got a lot of long field goal attempts. I'm not sure if the dad strength is a, a real thing, but if it is, I'm definitely benefiting from it. Now this is, was this you and the Mrs. long-term plan as far as like having a kid right now, or was it just kind of like a, you know? Um, <laughs> that's a personal <laughs> question. Hey, hey, no, that's a personal question, right? my goodness. <laughs> we always wanted kids, <laughs> but you know, uh, I give Jen a hard time because yeah. she wanted to be like financially stable and you know. Well, I, excuse me, but yeah. you now are. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm working as a software engineer and she was uh, a flight instructor. Like I'm pretty yeah. sure we're financially set now. We're, we're good to go. So I give her a hard time. It took me making an NFL roster for her to let me <laughs> start a family with her. So. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I don't even want to go down that road. <laughs> but, but I do just one or two other baby related things that I, I just kind of, because it's only been 10 weeks, but I didn't realize until today that uh, um, Colton was born r like hours after the preseason game in Las Vegas. Is it, that right? In um, the, it was the Raider, the Rams game. The yeah, Rams game. So the LA. first one. Yeah. The first one. Mm -hmm. So tell the people the story about how you, because I just think this is greatness. <laughs> how how you knew it was impending. Yes. Let's try to think about work. I can't be in two places at once, <laughs> but I really want to get to the second place as fast as I can. Uh, how did you how did you navigate getting from L.A. back here? Yeah, it was a lot of planning and preparation, which I don't usually do a good job of. So I'm proud of myself for that one. But um, we booked a flight through American Airlines um, like months in advance because it was a planned C-section um, for the Monday morning after the game. So our game ended in L.A. at like five o'clock or something like that or four thirty and um, had a flight uh, out of L.A.X. at seven um, and had the Cowboys uh, set up some um, transportation, which the car was in the tunnel waiting for me. Yeah, right no, they're the good game. at that. They're yes. good at that. <laughs> so I ran off the field kind of as I realized the game was over. It was probably 10 seconds left on the clock, sprinted in, took all my gear off. and. I changed. was actually going to say, did you yeah. change out of your uniform? You changed out Sh of it, okay. but I did not shower, which is kind of gross. <laughs> no, uh, that's all right. <laughs> got on in that car, and I was in the terminal. I'd gotten pre-check. I went and got TSA pre-check in Oxnard just so I could get home a little bit faster. 
and that's an awesome process. Oh, you didn't have that. it before? No, no, oh. that is life changing. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, you don't have no idea. It is. Yeah. It took me like ten seconds to get through the terminal right. security, which right. is awesome. So I was at the gate within like ten minutes of the game ending. Yeah. With that car, uh, the police escort, TSA pre-check. Oh wow. I actually had time to sit down at the California Pizza Kitchen, have <laughs> a little uh, celebratory beer with myself. Little boy. Then hop on the flight, which actually my father-in-law. Here's the here's the cool <laughs> part. Yep. Father-in-law um, had booked the flight as well as the captain, so he flies for American Airlines, and he made sure that he got that flight. So if I was running a little bit behind, he'd kind of delay it for us. <laughs> so there's a great picture on your, uh, I think it's your Instagram of you sitting in the cockpit with your father-in-law. Yes. And did you say up there? The, and he then he f- literally <laughs> flew you back. Yeah. Uh, was it a deadhead or was it a flight full of people? No, it was full of people. It was a normal, normally scheduled American Airlines and flight. And did you get, did you sit in the cockpit with him? Going oh on? no, that would be very illegal. I sat in the in the back, so uh, I just came up there for the picture and beforehand, and then went back to my my seat. That's such a flex. My father-in-law <laughs> flew me. That's that's crazy. Yeah. I love that for you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, uh, so much to talk about with the uh, the Cowboys All Pro kicker Brandon Aubrey. Uh, who is uh, now financially stable and therefore <laughs> can be uh, the father of 10-week-old Colton. Uh, we're at Sidecar Social at the Star District in Frisco with Brandon, and we'll be right back. To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson, and broadcasting live from Sidecar Social at the Star in Frisco. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cowboys Hour, coming out of the Cowboys Bye. Thanks for being with us. Special guest, Cowboys All-Pro kicker, Brandon Aubrey. We are here at Sidecar Social. There you go. There you go. 
Glad you woke up out of your beers just long <laughs> enough to <laughs> take the cue. And oh, Nicole, who who brings us? this uh, opportunity to visit with the great Brandon Aubrey. I've got you covered. Uh, Albertsons, oh. when it <laughs> comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, when we sat down up here, Nicole <laughs> and I both realized independently of each other that we uh, missed a great opportunity because you've got your shirt. You own one? No. Oh, you don't? No. Well, I missed an opportunity. Oh, wait. Oh, no. You're talking about the butter. <laughs> yes. Of course I do. Yeah, well. <laughs> Sorry. Slow moment there. Hey, my bad. My bad. I, <laughs> wasn't I, picking up where you were putting by getting By getting to this stage in life, I have learned <laughs> to take nothing for granted. Um, so, uh, Cowboys merchandising, right, Brandon? Yeah. They came up with this shirt based off the nickname that Dak Prescott gave Brandon uh, last year butter mm. and they've got this phenomenal t-shirt with your pictures on it right absolutely and it says butter yeah. mm -hmm. and we each have one absolutely and neither of us wore it tonight <laughs> we were not we were not thinking so another time so uh how did you find out that they were doing that i'm just walking off the field after practice one day the social media team was there with it and um kind of asked me. Well, they, rate. they already had done it. They yeah. mocked it up and printed it out. Yep. And they asked me to give the shirt a rating, and I looked over, and went, well, that's really cool. Who, who did that? <laughs> but it's, it's awesome. I, I love that. Um, it's a really, really cool shirt, and glad they, they printed it for me. How many did they give you? Um, I'm working on it. I tried to put in a, a big order here of, like, 70 or so. I'm going to give one to each guy on the team. Yeah. Um, and then one to my family members. Do you have your friends from back home? Do they rock the shirt at all? Well, this is back home. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like high school friends. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Do they rock, they not, rock it? Not a lot of time to see friends right now. So yeah. I'm not, not okay. sure. I'm sure a lot of them have it. Okay. Uh, if, if not. <laughs> DallasCowboysProShop.com. That's how I got mine. Just went online and said I must have my butter shirt. <laughs> Appreciate um, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, pheno it's phenomenal. And, and uh, you do get a cut. Right? Yes, I do. Okay. okay. Yeah, through the PA, there's a, a small percentage goes to the players, which is awesome because I didn't really have to do any work for it. So. Well, that's the best I'm kind happy. of money. Yes. <laughs> that is the best kind of money. <laughs> um, so the, the, the butter, by the way, there's a great, it's one of my favorite pictures I've seen all calendar year um, on Brandon's, it's on your wife's Instagram? I, she actually added me as a collaborator, so it's on both. Which and that's what, where the confusion came from. Yeah, right. and uh, it is uh, young Colton. How old was he? Then? He was probably like five hours old. Six five hours five in that hours. picture. Yeah, I think so. And he's wearing a onesie that says "Baby Butter." <laughs> <laughs> now, if that's not the greatest thing you've ever seen, so let's revisit that. I know we touched on it last year, but you've had some time for it to grow on you. Uh, that's a, a name Dak gave you. Yeah. Because you're smooth as butter, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And what did you think when you heard that? Um, you know, I was just happy the the team was talking about me in a positive light. So, you know, I didn't have much time to think about it, but it, it, I love it. It's it's a great name. Um, it's a complimentary of the style of kicking I have, which, you know, uh, anytime someone's calling you smooth as a kicker, that's that's a good thing. So I'm happy. I stick with it. Now, Butter's a nickname they gave you, but is it was there a nickname that you, I don't know, maybe have thought of before that? No. 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 Okay. Yeah. Just thinking about kicking, kicking the ball, right. see ball, kick ball. Uh, do they, do many guys call you butter? <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of guys around the team. How long did it take you <laughs> to start uh, answering to it? Uh, quite a while. You know, Dak, you know, would be yelling butter across the room, and I'd just be staring at the wall, and Brian or Jen would hit me and be like, "Pay, pay attention, that's you." That's like, you. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, the success that you had last year, last year was um, remarkable, but not a surprise to you? Is that a fair statement? Um, you know, if you would have told me that's the way the season would have gone at the beginning of the season, yeah, it would have been surprising. Um, just kind of when you get the job, you kind of want to just go out there and, and make your kicks and be there the next week. Um, but reflecting on the way I got there, I don't think so, just because, you know, you're going out there and you're, you're making one kick at a time and then all of a sudden you, you do that over and over and over again you get to the end of the year and it's it's not easy to make one kick but it's something that you can process that you can do 
you go out there and do it once, then you go out there and do it again, just one time, one at a time. Then all of a sudden, at the end of the year, you're you're sitting at well, I think it was 35 or 37. So, yeah, you're in a year and a half. You're at 93 percent or something yeah. like that. Yeah, keep that going. Yeah, yeah. Um, was there a, a point at all, either last year or as the success continued into this year, that you said, I, "I'm good at this. I can. I'm surprised, but I can. I'm really good." Um. I try not to think like that. Just try and think, go out there and, again, and make the kicks because at any given time, you know, you miss two kicks in one game, people are going to be calling for your head and your, your percentage goes from 93 to 90 and then you have no wiggle room with, with your, your stats there. So as soon as you, you think you have it made and you stop focusing on the process or what, what you've been doing to get there, it, it can go away pretty quick. Is there any pressure to have to repeat that type of success this year for you? Do you feel it at all? No, uh, yeah, I try not to let myself feel the pressure. And, you know, there's enough pressure on each individual kick as you go out there um, internally because, you know, anytime you go out there, you have points to score. And if you don't do, do your job, it's really obvious and hurts the team pretty significantly. So each kick is pressure-filled enough that um, there's no pressure from past game, last week, or even the previous kick. It's just go out there and... Uh, do the task at hand what helps you not feel that pressure um i'm not entirely sure you yeah. know i lock in to uh my my task at such a small incremental level that there's not really a whole lot of room to think about anything other than taking the next step um going onto the field literally just watching the, the field goals shrink mm -hmm. or sorry grow as i walk out there <laughs> um and then going through my process in my head uh, each and every kick is I'm literally talking to myself through each step and what I'm doing with my hips, what I'm doing with my Wait, eyes. Wait, consciously? Wow. You, you, you sh talk to yourself about yeah. each step consciously? Yeah, it's, it's uh, just so there's no room to think about the pressure or think about the outcome or um, where we're at in the game. It's just exactly what I have to do, and that kind of clears the mind. Have, have you always been like that, even um, with, like, soccer? No, that's no? something that's very uh, much my process with just football. Uh, and it, my first year in the USFL, I didn't have that. I just went out mm. and kind of just wing, wung it or winged it. Is that <laughs> winged, winged or wung? Wing, winged. winged? When you make yeah. them all, you it know? can be wung. But <laughs> for the rest of us, it would be winged. Gotcha. So I went out there and winged it, and, you know, I didn't have quite the success I wanted. Uh, it was probably, like, 83 84 percent 85 some, somewhere in that range and wasn't quite happy with it and so i spent some time with a bunch of coaches a mental strength coach and um just mental performance was the next step because i felt like you know my kicking is good but sometimes i go out there and it's just not where it needs to be so i spent a lot of time focusing on the mental aspect of the game which m more often than not that's what um, holds kickers back and really all all position players in, in football how that, oh, I'm go sorry, ahead, go sorry, ahead. Go ahead. No, no. How often do you um, I kind, of, kind of meet with the mental coaches and things like that? Yeah, so I, I don't do it much anymore, but okay. when I was getting my process defined and refining it um, quite frequently. That first year in the USFL, um, was that the last time you missed two kicks in a game? Um, or did you even that year? No, I probably did. I think week nine of my first season against the breakers i missed two in that game an extra point in the field goal and then we actually got like a 30 yard game winning field goal or like 33 yard game winning field goal opportunity and i made it so you know short memory for the team I, i'm the hero now even though i cost us some points out there <laughs> but you go out there and make the last one usually it's a good day and how long did it take you to stop whipping yourself over having missed four points worth of kicks um you know i still you still doing it a little bit uh maybe but you know we've, we've come a long way from there and i think going through the process of coming up with that mental process for myself was probably because of that performance um you won two usfl championships yes did, did you get rings yes i do i have them do you ever do you ever wear them um, no, maybe I wore the first one to the second ones and I uh, wore it to the USFL game, but, um, not just around, they're pretty large and uh, obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if you ever win a Super Bowl here, wait, you, you think, you know, large, 
Oh, this, yeah. You, wait till you see what that would look like. That would be incredible. So um, when you – you hit the 66-yarder in preseason, um, which I think by now – it's just most of us aren't surprised anymore. Like we're stunned when you miss one. But I, I honestly think, I think I've said this on the air. I'm not sure. But you, you're going for 71 sometime this year. <laughs> the circumstance will present itself. Because you've hit it. You've cleaned that much distance sometimes for a kick that was less yardage. So you had that 66-yarder and then the one that they wiped off in Cleveland. And that's a... That's a long way from missing two with Birmingham and and like talking to yourself about what how did you how did you get from here to there? Yeah, a lot of preparation and, and practice, um, kind of reflecting on mistakes I've made, uh, and I made a lot of mistakes in training camp and preseason that first year, where we were lucky to have. Um, the same in, situation. In Birmingham or no, here? In, in here. So Dallas. last year, yeah. Yeah, a lot of chances to correct those mistakes. And even week one, missing that first extra point on a sudden change, I was lucky to have another sudden change that game. We actually had two more sudden changes. So it's just, you know, um, reflecting on mistakes and coming up with a plan to not make that mistake again um, has been massive for me. Brian, your kicking coach is here. Yes. Shout out to Brian. Can you wave his hand? Where is he, Where is he sitting? Where, Brian, can you hear us? There, there we go. There's there Brian. You go. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, by the way, Brian. <laughs> nice, nice work. work. Uh, how valuable has, you know, been working with Brian for since, what, 2019, I yeah, believe? Yeah, 2019. Yeah, how much has that just been so valuable for your growth? Yeah, um, he kind of showed me what the ropes wa looked like for, for kickers and what a, a workout would look like and um, the proper form and guided me through finding my steps. Each kicker kind of has their own um, steps and their own process for kickoffs and field goal. Um, so he helped me kind of map out what that looks like and then helped me make sure he gave me drills to work um, on my own to kind of figure out how to get to that same spot every time. It's just repetitively mm -hmm. taking those steps. Um, and then he was a, a good sounding board for um, where I stood against other kickers. Um, kind of just helped me build myself up and build my confidence. And then when he had taught me everything he could teach me, he pushed me out the door, which was also helpful because, uh, you know, you can't just sit around and kick on a high school field over and over again and expect a job to come. So I had to go out there and put myself out in the environment when I was ready to make a good first impression, which he helped me, you know, over the course of two and a half years, develop myself to a point where I could make a good first impression. All right, and before we take our next break, um, where do you think you stand <laughs> in the profession right now? Where do I stand? Like yeah, the, the in your kickers? mind, yeah. Um, I mean, we can look at the numbers, but that's yeah. not, that's just a, that's a piece, something on a piece of paper. I'd prefer not to even think about it. I just, mm -hmm. it's so irrelevant for kickers to compare each other because we're, we're never on the field at the same time. So I just want to go out there and kick the ball. So modest, I love it. Yeah, no, uh, we're Humble. gonna we're gonna try to probe the psyche <laughs> a little bit more in a minute. Brandon Aubrey's our guest on the Cowboys Hour. Uh, we're at Sidecar Social in Frisco in the Star District. We'll be right back.
to the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson, and broadcasting live from Sidecar Social at the Star in Frisco. And welcome back, Brad Sham and Nicole Hutchinson, and our special guest, Brandon Aubrey, the best kicker in the NFL. Brandon Aubrey is here. There we go. <laughs> Wake up. The um, so we were talking before we went on the air. The uh, Detroit Lions kicker, who they their guy got hurt. And they signed uh, Jake Bates. Is his name? Is that yeah. right? Which I didn't realize until getting ready for the game um, a couple of weeks ago that he was also a college soccer player. And um, m- much as you, you thought you were going to be a software engineer yeah. when you quit playing soccer. And um, if, you're, if you're not the all-pro kicker this year, it will be because his team has a better year than your team, and he will have had a good year, and that's what people tend to look at. He's fun to watch. Uh, did you get to talk to him? Yeah, I got to talk to him after the game. And, yeah, he, like you said, he's a, he's a great story. He was college soccer walk-on and then – I think he walked on to Arkansas as well as a um, kickoff specialist. He wanted to get opportunities to kick field goals, but never got it in college. Um, then went on to, I think he got a couple of looks in training camp with, like, the Texans, um, but didn't get kept. They they have Fairbairn, who's an excellent kicker as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so they weren't going to keep him as long as Fairbairn stayed healthy, and he did. So then he found a home in Michigan with the Michigan Panthers in the UFL last season and did an incredible job. He made three long kicks from 60-plus. Did you play them last year? Um, I did not. He, he was a oh, year. Oh, this was this yeah. past year. Yeah. You said they changed the UFL. That's yeah. right. Never mind. So he was a year behind me Withdraw there. Withdraw the question, Your Honor. <laughs> but he, he played really well, earned an opportunity. And, you know, the cool story about with him is he got to stay – in the same stadium because the Panthers played in, in Ford Field. And now he's still at Ford Field, which is really cool. And, and he said he was selling bricks? Yeah, I didn't know that part of it. But, yeah, that's what, that's what he was saying. Yeah, he, he said it at a press conference here uh, maybe after the game mm-hmm. uh, yesterday. So he's they're having a moment like Cowboy fans did with you uh, last year and continue to. Um, the process that you described – uh, a little bit ago about um, thinking through every step yeah. still. Um, um, that surprised me a little because we all want to think that by now you just wipe the slate clean and you go out and there's the ball. It's always in the right place thanks to your snapper and your holder yep. and you just kick it. So now, uh, what, here's what I'm imagining now, that you – go out there and you find a way to block out all the noise and it becomes like a cone of silence <laughs> and maybe there's some like uh, chariots of fire music or something playing in the far distance <laughs> and that's all you're aware of and hear as you go through the process and hit the how am i completely wrong um no not not really so that's the the idea where i wish i could just tune everything out um and not have anything going through my brain but that's not realistic to achieve um, on every kick. So I got to go out there and kind of crowd out all the other noise with my own talking. So that's what I'm doing. I don't necessarily need to hear all of those things I'm saying um, to go out and kick the ball, but um, I'd rather hear that than if you don't make this kick, this happens. If no, that guy doesn't expect, that guy's going to do that. This guy's going to do that. So I don't want to be thinking about the rush. I don't want to be thinking about the snap or the hold. I just want to be thinking about what I'm doing. Um, so I'd rather hear myself talking than, you know, any of the fans or the other team or whatever it could be that pops into your head when you're you know, going about your daily job. Kickers have become much more accurate. And so it's brought upon, like, reports of the NFL possibly narrowing the uprights. What's your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's kind of silly. Mm. I mean, it doesn't need to change. Um, it would make, you know, our jobs a lot more difficult if you narrow the uprights. And guys – um, are better at their job, but I mean, every position is getting better at their job. We don't need to change the game for that. And if you're frustrated with kicking because it's too accurate, that you're going to be more frustrated with it when you can't rely on um, kickers to make inside of 40. Because I mean, if you narrow the uprights, it's going to be very, very difficult to be consistent inside of even 40. On mm. uh, the practice field, it, is there not a 
goal post with like the uh, arena league yeah uprights we do have those and and yeah. when you kick at those how do you do um i mean do you keep track or no um you, that's just a visual trick i'm playing on myself so when i go out to the the bigger uprights then you know you can kind of oh wow there's a lot of room to play with there so no i when i'm kicking on those i'm just for feel and then you know even when it goes wide right by like a foot you're like oh, that's good it's good on normal uprights so it's more of just a visual trick i'm playing on myself i couldn't tell you how many go in and don't go in when i'm kicking on those probably i'd say they're 50 percent smaller there's 50 percent less room so probably somewhere around 25 to 50 percent less go in if i had to guess what's your regimen outside of the pra typical practice you get at the star because you know you see of course like DBs and wide receivers, they go run or whatever, do routes and things like that. But what's your type of regimen off of the practice field at the star? Yeah, so with kicking, um, it's such a violent motion that you can't really do it very frequently. So we're only kicking twice a week in practice. And the rest of it is just recovery. Uh, we do our, our lifts and our runs. Um, there's not a whole lot of film to watch. Mm -hmm. We'll watch each kick back, but in practice, we only get six live ops with the team. So... You get six six reps a, a week on film to go break down what you're doing. Other than that, it's just a feel, uh, feedback, kind of go out there and I kick the ball. And if it felt a little bit like this, um, maybe Brian uh, has eyes on it and he's like, oh, that was this that you didn't mm -hmm. do normally. So there's not a lot of kicking. Um, and, you know, I like that. I like to be fresh on game days. And I don't kick a lot in warm-ups because at that point, if you're struggling, um, I'd rather be – fresh then try and fix it on the field because you're likely not going to fix it on the field if you're, if you're if you're just at least fresh and struggling it's yeah. better than being sore and tired and struggling so how has the new Lots. kickoff rule uh impacted your mental process because you used to just you could line up and if they if bones said get rid of it just you could just boom it and it's a touchback yeah that, Led the league last year. Yeah. But so now you're kind of, <laughs> you're hitting a little chip shot here and a wedge down there, and it's not as easy. Yeah, so that's where the soccer takes over. That's kind of where the flow comes in. Um, I'm not really thinking about, I don't have a strict regimen on that. Um, right now it's just put the ball on the tee um, and just kind of pick a spot and kind of in my brain say I want to hit a driven ball or I want to hit a little lofted ball or whatever I want to hit, and I go out there and hit it to the best of my ability. Um, so that is more of the soccer player where I'm not really thinking about anything in particular. Just put the ball in that area, and then that's that's it. Do you practice that more? Yes, I practice that quite a bit. Um, that Last year I hit no kickoffs in practice. This year I'm probably hitting like 20 a week, just making sure I can find my spot and hit it and make little tweaks here and there if, if I'm not hitting the exact spot I want. What different parts of the foot do you use for the different type of kicks? I'm interested to know that. Um... I don't know. If so, like, for a wedge, is there a different way that you kick the, fall, the ball or no? I don't know if I want to say Oh, that. my oh, bad. Yeah. It's a secret. Okay. <laughs> okay. We like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, that gets me to onside kicks. Yeah. Did you see the game? Yes, I think it was yesterday where the guy, like, whiffed. Yeah. yeah. Wh yeah. Which game was that? That was the 49ers Chiefs. It was, the, it was a punter. It was Wishnowski going out to do something that's probably not in his job description and, you know. <laughs> didn't have the best <laughs> the best showing, but I'm sure if he went out and did it again, he, he'd do better. All right, so you have the only successful onside kick in the league this year. Yeah. It uh, speaks more of the, the guys um, on the field with me than, than me because, you know, my job is fairly easy on that one with the, the way they asked me to hit the ball there. Um, so that, that's an easy, easy job for me to do really hard to go recover that so the guy the other 10 guys on the field did fantastic and you know crazy stat that's actually cj's second fumble or not fumble uh onside, onside. kick recovery mm -hmm. which is pretty crazy in his career you mean Yeah, in his career yeah the other yeah. one if i'm not mistaken the other one was against atlanta yeah the zero line yeah same, in same 2020 mm -hmm. same kind of kick yep. yeah so what how many different kinds of onside kicks do you practice I don't practice onside kicks. You don't? <laughs> no. Oh, wow. uh, it's such a rare thing to do. Um, and that you just put the ball down flat and say, let's yeah, just well, hit it over there. Yeah, for that one in particular, um, if Bones asked me to do something different, we'll go and do something different. But um, it's so infrequent uh, 
to hit an onside kick that it's not something I really practice at least in season. I'll go out and mess around with them maybe once a month where I just have an onside kick day and just go have some fun, see what I can uh, come up with. Well, I hope I don't have the opportunity to talk about it in a game because with the new rules, you have to be behind in the fourth quarter yes. uh, to onside kick. So hopefully that won't come up. But if it ever does, uh, boy, have I got a story for everybody. Nicole. Who's bringing us this lovely program this I've, evening? I've got you covered, right, Lou Casey? <laughs> Stand tall while you're tailgating or cheering in the stands with the Dallas Cowboys collection by Lou Casey. Shop the collection today at Lou Casey's six DFW locations and online at LouCasey.com. Lou Casey, the official boot of the Dallas Cowboys and Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. We'll be back <laughs> with Brandon Aubrey on the Cowboys Hour and your questions at Sidecar Social when the Cowboys Hour continues. The Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson, and broadcasting live from Sidecar Social at the Star in Frisco. Welcome back, Brad Sham, Nicole Hutchinson, and the All Pro Kicker Brandon Aubrey from the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I really only just noticed you are wearing your uh, Pro Bowl games hoodie. Oh yeah. How, how big a bag full of swag did you bring home from? So much stuff. It's uh, I almost couldn't make my flight with that bag. It's too much, but it was awesome. I, There's no I, such thing as too much. Yeah, I was just <laughs> grabbing everything I could there. You know, you, you never know when you're gonna get back. So, it's like, got to grab everything. I grabbed like two balls. I grabbed a bunch of towels. Grabbed all extra gear I could get my hands on. What so was your favorite part about the Pro Bowl? Yeah. Um, you know, just I actually had appendicitis during the Pro Bowl, so you I didn't did get, not. <laughs> yeah. Don't like it. I didn't get to enjoy it very much because you know it was just. Back to the room, I was on antibiotics, and I didn't really feel great. So oh. didn't get to do much, but um, it was just cool to be a part of it. Yeah. 
What part of the week did you get start getting sick? Um, I was actually before. So you were not yeah. feeling good going to yep. Orlando, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, it was two days before I got symptoms, and the doctor wanted to take it out right then and there. Uh, but I'm like, I'm going to this thing. <laughs> You're going to leave it in. So they gave me antibiotics and just monitored, monitored, monitored me pretty closely. Um, and, you know, I, I survived. So I, 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 I <laughs> asked that because, you know, we know that, uh, what was it, four years ago you were a software engineer. Yeah. And you, as far as you knew. That was what you're going to be. Absolutely. And now you're in. Now you're the Pro Bowl kicker. And I just wondered if you, even feeling bad, if you walked out <laughs> on the field and looked in the locker room and you're with all these guys yeah. and you thought, what the hell happened here? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, crazy because watch those guys on TV. I was a big fantasy football guy and big, but we'll sit down and watch football every day. Every day it's on. So to be in that room was pretty incredible and definitely took a lot of time to sit there and just enjoy it. Okay. Question from the audience. Good evening, Brendan. Hey. My name is Rambo. Rambo, nice to meet you. Thank you. So, since you're an awesome, fabulous kicker, we know that you have a lot of kicking drills. Do you dedicate a lot of time to working on drills, tackling your opponents? <laughs> I, I do not. Um, and, you know, my wife would be upset if I did. She tells me every day it's not my job to tackle people. And... I've, I've heard that from a few guys after watching the San Fran kickers go down on the team as well. So, um, no, I don't practice tackling, but, you know, I, I got a big enough frame. I think I, I could do it if needed. But, of course, your coverage <laughs> team's so good that that's never, ever Absolutely. It's never going to be a problem. Um, so I hope I don't make the uh, lovely Mrs. Aubrey angry with me. <laughs> um, we're, we're just so um, admire your even keel good bad up down those are words that seem to exist only in someone else's periphery for you right you've mastered the art of and when jen was with you last year and while you were signing autographs during a break i said to her is he really like always like this <laughs> she said he is and she said the only time she ever saw you get really excited was the day of the USFL draft when you realized you were going to at least get a chance to be a pro football player. Do you remember the occasion? Yeah, absolutely. Um, sitting there working from home, and you can put air quotes because the, the draft's going on. It's an all-day thing, and the kicker draft round, they did by position. So the kicker round was like round 45. So oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, well, hold on. Stop, hold that thought for a second because I want to just, for people who don't know, you, you, you played, so you were number one pick in uh, soccer, and you, that didn't pan out the way you wanted it to. So then you were a software engineer. Yep. And you, despite being a competitive athlete, you thought, okay, that's, I guess I just watch football now. Yep. And she said to you one day watching a football game, somebody missed a kick. And Jen said, you, you can do that. So she'll have me say that the kicker didn't miss the kick. I got that wrong before. She says the kicker just hit an extra point or something okay. and she's like you could do that and, but yes that that is that is true and then i spent and that was the spark yes that was the spark spent three years training um with brian with brian okay then um over with a bunch of combines you know there's a kick, kicker circuit where there's like three or four major events where scouts come out to and you you have all the free agent kickers um that think they still have it go out and compete and maybe two or three guys get a, a workout or whatnot um, so I'd go to those for, I think I went through a full cycle um, where I performed really well, but scouts were like, you don't have any experience, you don't have any film, so we can't give you an opportunity. And that's where the USFL came in. Um, and I knew if that didn't work, if I didn't, you know, make a roster there, um, then it probably wasn't going to happen for me. And it just so happened that we'd been sitting there working from home, watching that draft for 45 rounds. I don't know why we didn't just turn it on when the kicker draft was going, or the kicker round was going, but... <laughs> You know, you're a fan. Yeah, you're a football exactly. Fan. So we're, we're sitting there watching, and the kicker round comes up, and um, the Stallions had the last pick, and you know, watch seven other kickers' names get called, and then comes to the last pick. And all right, like, stop. What are you thinking right now? <laughs> Everybody's name's been called, but yeah, yours. Yeah, uh, you know, because at the combine where they handed out the contracts to kickers, they handed out probably 20 contracts, and I had I had the best day. Uh, at that combine, in, in my opinion. Um, so I, I think 
I deserved the opportunity, but it came down to the, the last pick. And I'm at that point, well, you know, shoot, it's probably not going to happen. I almost like turned it off and just walked away and got back to back to my normal job and like, okay, that's it. I was about ready to just close the book and all right, we, we gave it our all and it just didn't happen. But you know, it happens that there was a connection there that I wasn't aware of. Um, Skip Holtz was the coach of the team and he had played at Notre Dame with um, one of the combine um, coaches that uh, puts on, uh, he actually put on the combine for the USFL that year, which John Carney, they played at Notre Dame yep. at the same time. And so John had been working with me um, quite a few times at that point, and he knew I had the ability just, you never know with a kicker on game day if they're going to be able to mentally handle the load. So um, he told Skip, who at that time only knew two or three of the kickers on that list, um, that somebody had to give me an opportunity because no one in the NFL was going to, but I'm as good of a kicker as anyone else out there if um, I can just handle the, the mental aspect of the game. With, it, with everything you just said, that all I'm hearing is that this journey was not easy for you. No. Um, but you've had the support from your wife. Mm -hmm. um, I watched the feature that uh, Amazon Prime did on you with yeah. Taylor Rooks, and your dad even said, of course your dad's been there to support yeah. as well, but your dad had said that when you were growing up, um, your mom you and your mom will watch European soccer together. Yeah, EPL. Guy, and, yeah. Your guy, and guys <laughs> would miss goals or uh, miss kicks, and she'd look back and say, you could have made that. Absolutely. So having that type of support through this entire journey, how valuable has that been for you? Yeah, I know. Um, sometimes you sit there on the couch and you hear that, and you're like, mom, you're, you're delusional. Like, <laughs> whatever. But just that repetitive messaging it gets into the back of your head when you go out there and you're, you're attempting that kick and you're like, okay, I can't do this. And then, so it's, it's huge for me. I've never had an issue with a support system. Um, I was blessed with great parents and, um, I very intentionally picked a, a good wife. <laughs> so I have a, a good support system in place. Let, for let, me. Let me, I got a clue for you. She picked you. Yeah, okay. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. But, um, just, I, I picked my support structure pretty intentionally. I uh, got really lucky starting off with good parents, but um, from there, you know, people that are, are negative um, don't last long in my life, so I just kind of move on, and I like to think I have a good judge of character, and I'm only close with very few people, and um, try and make sure those people are, are good influences in my life. So do you view, that? that's great, I mean, I just, uh, I think that's uh, so uh, admirable, and it's a great way for people to go through life, you're a great example of how it works. Do you, have you changed over a year and a half whatever you thought your ceiling, if there was one, was for you in the NFL? Has your idea of it changed? Yeah, absolutely. Um, back when I started this process, I just wanted an opportunity to go out there and kick. And, you know, looking at the minimum salary, uh, I was thinking, oh, shoot, if I can do that for three years, then I don't have to be a software engineer for, for 17. I'm like. That's what the, the calculus was. Maybe I can retire 17 years earlier. Um, so I think I've hit a point where I'm going to get those those three years, and um, you know that's the goal achieved. But obviously now we're looking at it as a longer longer term deal than that. So um, everything from here is just is gravy for me. I know you're a person that stays locked in in the moment, um, especially when you're on the field. But do you have any goals this year for yourself? Um, my goal is always to stay 90% on field goals, and that's just about it. Uh, that's the only one I'll set, and everything else is out of my control. Okay. Everything will fall into place. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, n extra points is not? 90% uh, as well, uh, but you want it to be above that. Yeah, yeah. for extra points. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm kind of surprised that you are give yourself enough grace not to think you should make every kick. Right? Oh, you want to, but you, things no, I know happen. you want to. Yeah. But did you, you? So you've come to the realization that, okay, I'm gonna miss one at some point. Absolutely, and that helps you from then. You know, if you set goals and then you're unable to achieve them, you're gonna have a moment where that sets in, and that might drop your mentality a little bit. You might start go a little bit negative there. So I try and build in a little bit of leeway so that doesn't happen. And obviously it's already that moment would have already came and went this year. So the self-forgiveness process is pretty easy Absolutely. by that point. Yeah. Uh, give this guy a big round of applause, will you? This is, you're such a delight <laughs> to talk to and, and you're even more fun to watch. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. You thank bet. You. Brandon Aubrey, the best kicker in the NFL and he's only getting started. <laughs>
Well, the long <laughs> kicks, the long kicks are a pound of butter. <laughs> and uh, Nicole and I will be back here next Monday night, Sidecar Social at the Star District in Frisco on the next Cowboy Hour. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?